Okay, so you've read about Niels Bohr, and uh, you even watched videos on Niels Bohr. So let's talk about his model, and let's talk about how his model brings together all this stuff about uh, emission spectra of light uh, and how electrons are arranged. So here is the Bohr model. Okay, so here is how we imagined an electron being. There's a nucleus at the center, and electrons are circling the nucleus, and they're circling the nucleus at specific uh, distances away from the nucleus. These are called energy levels. So this circle is an energy level. So is this one. So is this one. Here is the electron in the first energy level. Okay, we call the energy level closest to the nucleus. We call it the uh, first energy level. The next one out the second. The next one out the third, etc. and so on. Okay. So only a specific number of electrons can fit in each energy level. Two in the first energy level. Eight in the second. Eight in the third. Eighteen in the fourth is what he posited. And uh, here he has a bigger atom like uh, sodium with 11 electrons, two electrons in the first, then it's full, then eight in the second, then it's full, and the 11th one goes into the third energy level. Okay, so uh, how did he come up with this? Uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, check it out. Um, it, it went along with this. People had known about these hydrogen spectra or these, these uh, emission spectra from different elements uh, way back in the day. So they knew that when you put um, a, uh, element, an element inside a container and you shocked it, you electrified it, uh, you got light out of it. And people were making stuff like neon, neon lights, but they didn't know exactly why. They just knew that every element gave a specific color. So hydrogen gives a color, kind of like a pinkish one. This helium is really mostly white. That's kind of yellowish here, but I think that's a picture. It should be mostly white. And uh, neon gives a characteristic kind of a red-orange color. And uh, people want to know why, and Niels Bohr's uh, Bohr model was actually the best explanation of why. And so um, he, he showed not only does each element give off a specific color, but you can take that uh, color and you can break it down and get other colors out of it. Okay, so um, you may have heard that if you take white light and put it through a spectrum, you'll get the rainbow of colors out of it. So basically white light is all the colors combined. If you take all the different colors combined and you combine them in light, um, you get white light out of it. Now, when you take an element and you pass it through one of these uh, uh, atom shockers, we'll call them, um, they're really power sources. Uh, they pass a voltage through there. Basically, what they're doing is they're shooting electrons from one end to the other. Let me go ahead and go back to this. They're shooting electrons from end to the from one end to the other, and as they pass through, they hit the electrons inside the atoms. And by hitting those electrons, they excite them to higher energy levels. Okay, and so um, hydrogen has a specific set of wavelengths. If you pass that pinkish light that you get from hydrogen, this one right here, if you pass it through a prism or a thing called a diffraction grating that uh, we may have seen in a demonstration you will get a light uh, a, a red light that comes out of it a line of red light and you'll notice at the bottom of this uh, this uh, chart here there is uh, wavelengths that correlate to these colors so there's a wavelength that's above five, 657 nanometers these are all nanometers um, there's one that's less than 500 kind of a green light there's one that's like between 400 and 500, like a 420s or so, um, that's a blue one. And then uh, about 400 is a ultraviolet one. A little over 400 is an ultraviolet one, or violet one, I should say, uh, and a few others here. Um, usually you can't see anything below 400 nanometers or above 700 nanometers. That's not in the visual scope of our, our eyes. Um, so what he proposed and you'll notice that every element gets a different set of lines because every element even though they all have energy levels like you said um has them at different distances from uh from this from the nucleus so what he proposed is something like this that you saw in the book the reason why we get um different wavelengths different colors coming out of a um, element is because each atom is going through different transitions and so every transition from one energy level to the next is going to give you a different color. So here, these are all transitions that go to the first energy level. And
and each one of them is going to give you a different wavelength of light coming out of it. Um, these are four more transitions, and here's another four more transitions. Uh, these all going down to uh, second energy level. These are coming down to the third energy level. And what we're going to do when we're doing our problems is we're going to take this equation. This equation tells you how much energy is in an electron when it's in each of these energy levels. See the N right here? That's just what energy level it's in. You plug in the energy level in there, and it tells you how much energy that electron has. This is the Bohr equation. And the Bohr equation uses RH. RH is what we call the Rydberg constant. And basically, it's just this number, 2.18 times to the minus 18 joules. Um, so we kind of put these two together so you can just write this equation without having to write this over and over. Um, so basically, what, what our calculations is going to do is have us do this. And um, unfortunately, my... Um, my, my screen capture software here wasn't working with uh, PowerPoint, so I'm having to do this manually. If you plug, so let's say we have an electron that's in the second energy level. So follow my uh, pointer here. Hopefully this one's coming up. Uh, but it's in the second energy level. And see this arrow that goes from the second down the first. Now, this diagram right here is just showing the energy levels uh, flat across. Uh, instead of around. So in the previous slide, we showed the first energy level here, then the second here, third, fourth, etc., and so on. They went around the nucleus. Uh, but for clarity, what I've done is I just put the first energy level down at the bottom, then the second energy level above it, third energy level above it, and there seems to be less and less space between each successive energy level because they don't go on off into you know, infinity. So when an electron falls from the second to the first, what you want to do is uh, you want to uh, notice that when the electron falls from the second to the first energy level, it gives off a wavelength of light. And that wavelength of light, that uh, photon of light with a specific wavelength, um, has a certain amount of energy in it. And that energy is equal to the difference between the two energy levels that it fell between. So basically here, um, that equation I showed you earlier, will tell you how much energy an electron has when it's in the second energy level, just by plugging in the two into the end for the equation. And then um, when it falls down to the first, um, this is how much energy is in the first energy level. Once again, using the same equation, just plugging in a one instead of a two. So this we say E sub one or E one is the energy of the electron in the first energy level. And E two is the energy of that same electron in the second energy level. So it's the same electron falling from the second to the first, but it's going to have a different amount of energy in the second than the first. And when it does so, it loses that much energy. The difference between these two is that much energy. So we can take uh, the energy from the first, subtract it from the energy from the second, and that'll tell us how much the difference in energy is between the two. That's how much energy was lost by the electron. And therefore, that's how much energy is in this photon that's going to escape. So as the electron falls from the second to the first, it gives off a wavelength of, I mean, a, a photon of light that has this amount of energy, the same as the difference in energy between the two energy levels. And we know from doing the previous worksheet that if we know the energy of a photon of radiation, we can calculate its frequency. And once we have the frequency, we can calculate its wavelength. We can even calculate its wavelength in nanometers, and that's how I get the 122 nanometers. Now, don't worry about right now how we got all these numbers, how these numbers came about. Um, I will do a sample problem and show you. Um, I just kind of want to show you visually first what you're calculating uh, later on. Now, um, if we see all the different transitions that can occur, uh, this one was called the Lyman series uh, above. When an electron falls from the second to the first, we do all the calculations, we find that the wavelength is 122 nanometers. If we did the same thing, except we calculated from the third to the first, it would the wavelength of light that comes out of here would have 103 nanometers. That's a different wavelength. That's a different color, basically. When it falls from the fourth to the first, we get 97 nanometer uh, light coming out of it. From the fifth to the first, 95. And from the sixth to the first, 94 nanometer. And then we remember this, right? Well, where did those numbers come from? They're not on here. 122 is the largest one we have here. These are all numbers. These are all wavelengths above 400. They came from our what we call Balmer series. 
um, where the transitions are the electrons falling to the second energy level. They'll eventually come back down to the first, but um, once they hit the second energy level, uh, they, they can make all these different transitions. So if you did the calculations and calculated from the third to the second, you'd get a uh, wavelength of 657 nanometers. Uh, from the fourth to the second, you get a wavelength of 487 nanometers. From the fifth to the second, you get a wavelength of 434 nanometers. And from the sixth to the second, you get 411 nanometers. And if I go back to that, uh, that chart, notice, remember these numbers here, 657, 487, 434, and 411. You go back here, 657, there's 650 right here, there's 657, uh, 487, 434, and this is, okay, maybe 411 right there. I don't know if they're all lined up exactly, but that's where these come. Each one of these lines right here is a transition. This transition gives you that line 657 nanometers. This transition here gives you that line at 487 nanometers. So you can see kind of uh, from this right here where those are coming from and what, what that comes out of. So when an electron falls from the third to the second, gives off this line. And we can do others too. We can do uh, to the third energy level from the fourth to the third, uh, from the fifth to the third, from the sixth to the third. Since those are starting to get closer together, the energy is less and their wavelength is even bigger. So these are in the thousands of nanometers, or really the mic micrometer range, uh, 1,877 nanometers, 1,283 nanometers, 1,095 nanometers. Notice that the bigger the drop, the smaller the wavelength, because remember, the smaller the wavelength is correlated to a larger energy difference. Okay, so um, I just want to kind of have you guys see that. Um, now we'll go ahead and actually do a problem. <laughs> We're going to calculate one of these transitions, um, not all of them, but you can calculate any of these based on uh, how we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do it next. Okay, so how do we do uh, these problems? Um, and here's what the problem is kind of like. They're all basically the same. Calculate the wavelength that you would get when an elect, uh, electromagnetic radiation that you would get when an electron falls from n equals 2, second energy level, to n equals 1, first energy level. And I'm doing this one to show you how we get the numbers that we had in the earlier PowerPoint uh, presentation so that you can kind of correlate and see where all those numbers came from. All these numbers, are, all these problems are the same. You're just changing what the n's are. And you're going to get different answers depending on what the n's are. All right. So, um, so this basically says the electrons at the second energy level it's going to fall to the first energy level. What's the wavelength that's given off? Well, we have to calculate, first off, we have to calculate the energy of the electron in the first energy level and the electron, uh, the energy of the electron in the second energy level. Same electron, but when they're in different energy levels, they're going to have a different amount of energy. So um, let's go ahead and calculate. Let's go E2 first, because start off in E2. E2, and we're going to use the equation. Um, that it's minus 2.18, this is that Rydberg constant, times 10 to the minus 18th joules. Okay, so I always write that times 1 over n squared. Actually, uh, it's 1 over n squared. And so since we're in the second energy level, I'm going to put it here as a 2 squared. So n is the energy level that it's in. So that equation that I showed you, uh, here, let, me, let me write it out here. E subscript N is equal to minus R subscript H times 1 over N squared. And RH is just this number right here. This is this number right there. Positive, not with a negative. Um, so basically all you're going to do is from energy level to energy level, all you do is change this number here this n squared here. Let me go ahead. And once again, this equa these equations work for hydrogen. So right now we're just going to focus on hydrogen because hydrogen is the simplest element. And so it's easiest to do this with that. So how much energy does it have? All I do is take this number and divide it by 2 squared, which is 4. So if I go ahead and do that, I end up with minus 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. 
Okay, so it looks all complex, complicated because of scientific notation. But all, all, it, all it is is this number divided by 4. Now, we need to do that for E2. We also need to do that for E1 because they're going between each other. So E2 now for E1. We do the same thing. We take the minus 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times 1 over... And here, instead of putting 2 squared, I'm going to put 1 squared because this is for the first energy level. So whatever number is here, we put it here. If this number is here, we put it there. And so basically, 1 over 1 squared is just 1. So the energy in the first energy level in the hydrogen atom is going to be negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. So this is how much energy the electron has in the second energy level in uh, second energy level. And this is how much energy it has in first energy level. Now remember the electron is going to go from uh, right here. The electron is going to go from here to here. So it's going to go from this much energy to this much energy. One thing to note, you'll notice that this number is kind of smaller than this number. 10 to the minus 19th is a smaller number than 10 to the minus 18th. But it's negative, so this one's less negative. Okay, it's kind of like negative 10 versus negative 20. Right? Negative 20 is actually a smaller number, even though 20 is bigger than 10. Same thing here. Now, what, next thing we need to do is figure out, well, if we want to figure out what uh, wavelength of light um, left, left out, when we had this, we have to figure out the change in difference in energy here, because that's how much energy is going to be in this wavelength. And then once you have the energy, you can calculate the frequency. And once you have frequency, you can calculate the wavelength. That's why we did the worksheet we did yesterday. But first, let's calculate the difference here. So I'm going to go ahead and pan this. And once again, it looks all complicated. All it is is you know, dividing by 4, dividing by 1 uh, so far. It's just that it's scientific notation that throws people off. So the difference in energy, get my pen again here. The difference in energy, I'll use this Greek letter delta here. This triangle is a Greek letter delta. And basically, difference in energy is, well, it went from the second energy level, fell down to the first. So it ended up in the first, minus 2.18. Oops. Let me go ahead and do this so you can see. We're going to take E1 minus E2. And E1 is this number right here. Whole thing. So we're going to write minus 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. That's E1 minus E2, which is this number over here that we already calculated. Minus 5.45 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. And what is the difference between the two? Well, let's do the calculation. I think it was something like 1.64, right? Uh, times 10 minus 18th. So let me go ahead and do that. Negative 2.18. Be careful with your negatives and positives because um, it makes it kind of difficult. Times 10 minus 18th uh, minus a negative 5.45 times. 10 to the negative 19th, and we get 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18th. Okay. So it's negative 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. Okay. That here is how much energy differences there is between the first energy level and the second energy level. Okay. That's how much energy this uh, electron lost. Right. And once again, we've seen these numbers in the other one. This is just how, this is how we got them. And notice that this is negative. And the reason it's negative is because this is representing, it's negative when it's representing the amount of energy lost by, electron, by the electron. Okay. 
that's how much energy is going to be in our photon. So now we're going to use the energy in our photon. Photon, And in order to figure out how much energy is going to be in the photon, and uh, we're um, sorry, we already calculated that. <laughs> Um, but in order to get our wavelength, we want to turn wavelength, we want to turn energy to frequency, just like we did in the last problem, the last worksheet. Once you have energy, you can turn it into frequency using E is equal to H times fre frequency. And then once you have frequency, you can turn it into wavelength using the equation C is equal to frequency times wavelength. So that was from uh, yesterday's video. Um, so let's do that. Now we're going to use positive uh, 1.64 times 10 to minus 18th because the energy that was lost by the electron is going to be a positive energy inside the photon. So um, so we're going to the, the 1.64 positive times 10 to the minus 18 joules is equal to the amount of energy in photon. Okay, so in order to figure out the frequency, you'll recall E is equal to H over uh, uh, um, nu. If you want to solve for nu, you just divide both sides by H, so you get E. Frequency is E over H, and you remember that H is Planck's constant. So here's your E right here. I'll plug that in. 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18 joules divided by Planck's constant which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th joules times seconds okay, if you don't remember that you might want to check the last video so let's go ahead and do that once again remember to double check uh, your numbers with um, try to see if you plugging in these numbers into the calculator gives you the same answer you can double check to make sure that you're uh, using your scientific notation correctly on your calculator. That seems to be um, a challenge for many students. So 1.64 times 10 to the negative 18th divided by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th is going to give me a frequency of 2.47 times 10 to the 15th. Oh, my glasses wouldn't. So, all right, here's 2.47 times 10 to the 15th and my units joules cancel it's going to be with one over seconds okay. now i have my frequency the question is not asking for frequency it's asking for wavelength so i still have to turn it into wavelength so let me pan, pan this up now that i have frequency i'll go ahead and solve for wavelength and you'll recall i have the equation c is equal to wavelength times frequency. If I want to solve for wavelength, I can divide frequency to both sides. And what I get to turn into is wavelength is equal to C over frequency. What you guys can actually just take this number and plug it in here. Remember the speed of light is also a constant. It's three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Um, so you plug that in there um, and then solve for it. it but that would mean that you'd have to keep rewriting. Every time you canceled out a number of scientific notation, you have to rewrite the whole thing out. I think it's easier just to cancel out letters than a whole scientific notation number. So our wavelength is going to speed of light. And remember that speed of light is always 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Divided by frequency, which is 2.47 times 10 to the 15th per second. These guys cancel, and what we end up with is, let me take that, 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 2.47 times 10 to the 15th. It's going to give me 1.22 times 10 to my 7th. Negative 7th. And my units are going to be in meters. So this is my wavelength, but it's in meters. If I want it in nanometers, like it asks for, then I have to just convert it. 1.22 times 10 
to the negative 7 meters. I'm going to go ahead and do a conversion factor. Whoops, what happened there? All right. Remember that a meter, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So it takes a billion nanometers uh, to cancel out one meter. So I'm going to go ahead to equal one meter. Put meter in the bottom so they cancel. I'm going to put one times 10 to the ninth, which is a billion nanometers on top. And then what I'm going to get here is 1.22 times 10 to negative 7. Multiply by 1 times 10 to the ninth, and I'm going to get 122. And I'm going to be left to with nanometers. And this is my final answer. And this is how you do the problems. The worksheet that I gave you has these steps written at the bottom of the worksheet. And really, there's only one way to do these problems. The only difference from one problem to the next is what uh, energy level you start off with and what energy level you end up at. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and just re re summarize. Okay. So this was the problem. This is just one problem right here. All right. We want to find the wavelength of, let me go ahead and go into a different color here. We wanted to find the wavelength. Of, I need to pen things. We wanted to find the wavelength uh, in nanometers um, for when an electron <coughs> falls from energy level 2 to energy level 1. N equals 2 to N equals 1. N equals means this is your energy level. So we want to find the wavelength you're going to get, electromagnetic radiation, when that happens. Uh, so we need to find out how much energy the electron had in the second energy level and how much the electron had in the first energy level. So we did it twice. We're using this equation right here. And this is our RH right here. And this is our energy level right here. This is our N here. So our this is our rate break constant times 1 over N squared. This is 2, second energy level. This is what we get. Basically, this number divided by 4 gives us this. Same thing over here, this number divided by, same number is up here, your Rybert constant. It's always going to be this number right here. Divided by 1 over 1 squared, and this time the energy level is the first energy level. So 1 squared is just 1. So basically, we just use the same number. Now we know the energy when it's in the second energy level and when it's in the first energy level. If you go back to that PowerPoint earlier, um, the, the part of the um, video where they're showing the PowerPoint, these are the energies of the electrons in the second energy level and the first energy level. Okay. And then once we have those, we subtract them from each other. E1 minus E2, because it went from E2 to E1. You go, basically go uh, the energy of your final minus energy of initial. E final minus E initial is your change. Oops. Not E2, uh, E1, E initial, I initial. So E1 minus E2, because we started in E2 and we ended up in E1. And um, subtract the two. That gave us then, therefore, gave us the difference. That's how much energy was lost by the electron, and that's how much energy was in the photon. Now that we knew we had a photon uh, and the energy in that photon, uh, we can figure out the wavelength and then once we have the wavelength we can figure out the frequency so we plug this in for energy right here Oops. keep moving these things we plugged in the energy right here divided by Planck's constant remember this is a constant this number is always the same and we ended up with a frequency once we have the frequency we can plug into this equation right here the wavelength is speed of light over frequency here's your speed of light always the same once again these are constants and this frequency went down here, and we ended up with the wavelength in terms of meters. And if they don't ask you to be specific about nanometers, that would be enough. But I think we were specifically asking for nanometers. So all we do is take the nanometers, and we go ahead and we convert it to uh, take the meters and convert it to nanometers. Because remember, one meter is one times ten to the ninth nanometers. Okay. And that's how you do these problems. Okay, all of them are done the same. The only thing that changes is the ends, and they give you different answers each one. Each one of those, um, e each one of those wavelengths that I got was somebody doing uh, us doing a 
each of these calculations individually. Okay. Hope this is, helps you. If not, um, come see me and I'll give you a hand.